Okay, uh, this is Charlie Biney, and we're going to take you uh, through a real quick uh, look at our TGA-7 that we're fixing to ship out. Just the basic setup so you see it when it gets into your lab, and, uh, and just a little bit about it and what you're getting with it. Now, first of all, this is a TGA-7 analyzer that's, uh, that's going out. This is a turnkey system. You have the analyzer, you have the TAC controller, which is the interface to the computer. And this is going with a Dell Optiplex uh, with Pyrus 5.0 software. Now this software is, the reason we put 5.0 on here is that's the last supported version that Perkin Elmer uh, had for the entire 7 series. So we go ahead and install it. We do install it on Windows XP. It was originally uh, written on XP but written for uh, Windows 2K Service Pack 2. What we found is is that you can't really do that anymore and XP is, is, is a lot less buggy than Service Pack 4 so hey, there's really no appreciable loads that we know of that are, or that Perkin Elmer is aware of that, uh, for this that they may have shared this with. So we don't see any problem at all. XP seems to be working very well. Now the TGA-7 analyzer, let's go ahead and start up here with the balance. There's two, two hold downs here. You want the balance to be, you want this to be snug because you want good gas control, you don't want any leaks on here, uh, but you do not need to crank these things down a lot. What you're going to see uh, with the balance is we have a tear weight. Now, this is obviously a manufactured weight. We take some wire, we wind it up, we, we set it for whatever weight we want to offset the, uh, the sample pan, stir up, and the uh, uh, quartz hang down. Now, we put a one millimeter quartz hang down on here. It's real stable, it's a little bit heavier, which is a good thing. It's much easier to clean, it's, it, it is much more ro robust on it than the, uh, than the 0.5 are the nichrome wires. We can supply any, basically anything you want, but this is uh, the preferred one. It works really well. Uh, we will ship these disconnected. We will take this to, to the base here, and then we will put this in the tube and put it with an accessory kit. Let me put this back on here. Whenever you put it on, you kind of want to just push it around and then just loop, just get these just so they're snug, a little bit snug on here. You have uh, you have your furnace here, you have a spirit level right here, one of those bubble levels. When you in the software, right now this, your furnace is in the cool position, let's tell it to go up. And the first pneumatics you're going to care about is your furnace pneumatics. That's uh, Typically, you're going to run it around 20 PSI. It, it depends on a lot of things, whether or not it's going to be 16 or 22. You don't want it to go over 30. There's actually the pneumatics inside are intended to be less than that. And right now, this is set at 20. You're not, you notice that nice, slow rise? Well, this is not a high static environment, but they often are in high static environments. If you go up too fast, it's going to pull it over, you're going to knock it off the hang down, you could do some uh, uh, retrieving within the furnace. You don't want to do that. So let's be patient and just let it go nice, easy uh, run up there. The other thing important about that is that right now, uh, the stirrup that you saw, there's a break in that stirrup. Well, there's no hard rules here, but the typical place that you would expect to put this that's going to work best is make the break of that stirrup right at the top of this first. Uh, that's going to get you within the range uh, for the, uh, uh, the heating range for your samples. And then another thing to remember is also you have uh, the spirit level here. We're going to shift this with all feet all the way up. When you get it, you're going to adjust three of these for this being in the center. You only want to adjust three. If you adjust four, you can start getting unstable. You, you will never, there's never going to be a scenario you need to adjust more than three. 
Well, in addition to the pneumatics, you're going to have two gas inputs here. You have a balance gas, you have a sample gas. Some people plug off the sample and they just run a balance. Say if they're just going to run nitrogen. Um, you know, it's depending on your method, you all can, uh, and you can, you're, we're happy for you to call us. We're happy to talk to you about it. But, uh, but we ship it like you're going to use two gases. So in addition to the quarter inch tubing in there for the pneumatics, you're going to get two 20 foot pieces uh, with fittings uh, for the balance. And also, so two uh, uh, H restrictors, which if you take your H restrictors, if you put 40 PSI in, uh, then you're going to basically get 40 PSI out. Yeah, it's uh, uh, somewhere in that area. So it's going to be a lot easier to control your gas flow with both of those. Let's see here. Um, we also have, uh, you know, again, everything will be in your accessory kit. Um, on the analyzer, in there is going to be a, a magnet. And so, you have a sample platform here. If you are running calibration reference materials, in this case, they're cured point materials, they're all metal. And so you would um, you would zero your your materials there, and then you address the magnet under here, pull it down, and then you would read your weight. You know, there's another uh, purpose for this. Uh, this right here for that platform. Let me show you what it is. A ton of people, including service guys, including almost every service guy, has at some point in time decided that they were going to, and I don't have a tweezer right here, take off the, the pan, take off the stirrup, or even load their sample just from right here. That is a bad idea. We probably need to rethink that because Everyone that I'm aware of in the history of Perkin Elmer who has consistently done that has eventually broken the hang down wire up here, which is a pain in the neck to replace. And it, uh, we have directions on how to do every bit of that. We're happy to send you, we're happy to do it ourselves. Of course, we charge for that. Uh, if they didn't do it the first time, they're going to do it the 101st time. They're going to do it sometime. So the platform is here for this. You can actually raise this all the way up and swing it off with the platform, just like that. Or you can hold it steady and put your samples in. Typically what you're, you're going to do is that you can take it down, you can put your sample in here, you can actually put it down here and put your samples in. Depending on what sample, you'll figure out your the best way to do that, but when you are uh, when you are reloading it, you're going to be a lot happier. And by the way, that did not take very long doing it like that instead of paying for expensive repair or breaking it, breaking it, uh, you know the uh, one of the one of the products there. Now, uh, let me talk about a little bit about what you're going to get. You are going to get a, uh, a copy of Perkin Hammer's published specs for this analyzer. It, basically, you're talking about sensitivity, volume. They do publish uh, precision for the standard furnace and for the high temperature furnace. Yeah, that's pretty much it. There were, there were, there were uh, background service specifications on this analyzer. There were also manufacturing specifications on noise and drift for zero uh, weight and for 500 milligrams. We, we calibrate for those here and, uh, and make sure that they meet them. So you'll get that on here also. And we will have uh, the runs. We typically run those several times. You may have a couple of these on your analyzer. I will tell you that these um, the no load drift and noise specifications are very tight. This is a, a 0.1 microgram balance. They're very tight. If you do not have a good incoming line with a real solid ground, you will have trouble doing this. If you have static issues in your lab, you're going to have trouble reproducing that. You know, there's a number of things. You really have to be operating the, uh, 
uh, have good operational uh, stability, you know, to pull these out. But once you do, they're very, they, they fall right in there. The runs on this particular analyzer are, are well within specifications, and uh, those specifications are going to be uh, printed here on the pre shipping checklist, right there. Uh, also, the final test specs say that Alumel and Percoloy should fall within these ranges, in this case 144.2 and uh, 164.2. And then uh, the same thing, Percoloy 586 and uh, 606. These are uncalibrated runs. Ours, you know, we've got up there on the higher end again, but we can adjust that anywhere we want to to bring those back, back in if you wanted it to be somewhere else. You're also getting uh, uh, a test run after calibration here. And you will see we did some, uh, some reproducing runs that, that we're going to send with you too. And it's easy to see some oxidation on here as uh, and we put another run in the, in, with this particular analyzer, we put another run in where we didn't purge. Here we purged the minimum uh, to make a, a middle run uh, because we know they're going to oxidize if we have any air in there at all. So this was the bare minimum. We, we included some runs with this analyzer to give you an idea of what happens when you run it in air. So we, put the, so we did not purge long enough. And it's interesting, we, uh, just as a, to stand back and look at that, and we'll discuss that with this customer with the, uh, uh, when we do the, the training course on, uh, on this, the web uh, training course on, you know, what are some of the precautions you want to do when you calibrate, what can you expect, how does this compare to running a real world sample, that sort of thing. And let's see here, I think that's it. Uh, Components in here. This will all be initialed by whoever's packing to make sure that they are there. And I think that's it. Uh, if you are, if you're getting with this analyzer, I hope you enjoy it. The installation. I'm sorry. The files. The help files on the installation. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. By the way, that's Andrew back there. <laughs> Among other things, he plays in a band, but he is a guy you usually talk to on the on the telephone. He's actually playing on our square this summer. You know, he's actually a viable human being, so. <laughs> but I'm glad he reminded me of that. There is, and uh, oh, in addition to this, and, and, the, and the, the webcast we're going to do, Perkin Elmer has got a lot of good information in their help files, and there is an installation help file for this and most of their analyzers. Let me show you where it is. If you go to Start, Programs, Pyrus, Pyrus Help, Pyrus Installation Help. You see a long list of instruments that were available at the time that 5.0 came out. We, this will still run on 9, and actually the, the, nobody's found any bugs on it on 10. It's hard to get to get 10 functioning, but um, uh, right here. At 5.0, there's a list of what was running then. And you have the TGA7 installation. And you could pretty much uh, go through this entire thing, and it'll have uh, um, how to unpack it, what the system components are, you know, connecting those. Some of the information might be uh, obsolete today. For instance, when this came out, I don't believe that they were putting quartz hang downs on it. You know, that sort of thing. But other than that, it's pretty good. I hope that helps. Good luck, and uh, we're always here if you need us.